Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. I'm going. Actually, we have a, we have a guest khatib uh, today, our dear brother, brother Omar Abdul Malik. But I wanted to um, welcome all of our guests. I want to let you all know that we have with us very special uh, religious leaders from various houses of worship here with us today. And we also will have uh, the mayor uh, is sending a uh, director here on her behalf also. And we, want, we will do a brief hold back uh, immediately after the Juma to hear uh, what the mayor, the mayor has been very uh, proactive. In fact, I, I see the mayor's rep now. Uh, but, so we want to hear from the mayor's rep. And if you have time, I want you to hear from some of the religious leaders uh, just to greet you and, and, and let you know uh, why they're here. But let me just share with you some of the names of those we have with us. Uh, certainly we have Reverend uh, Thomas Bowen, and we have Pastor Elisa Lassiter from the Capitol Hill United Methodist Church. Uh, we have uh, Pastor Michael D. Uh, Wilker, and we also have uh, Vicar Katie. Katie, I, I, I want to mess your last name up. Oz Wheeler? Yeah. Close? Okay. <laughs> Both from the Lutheran Church of the Reformation. Uh, we also have Reverend Alex Dyer and Carol uh, Conrad from St. Thomas Episcopal Church. And we have L.J. Uh, from St. Columbus Episcopal Church as well. Now there may be others here. And again, this is, this is a mood that's being made a call for us to get to know each other, to stand with us in solidarity. Certainly Muslims are the most discriminated against right now in the society. Poles have already stated that. And, we, and Muslims see and we hear and we see what's happening. So this is, this is we're very touched uh, by the moves we're seeing that's bringing us together. And people standing up saying if there's going to be a registry that they are going to become Muslims too and get in that line ahead of us. Ahead of us. They will be the first ones. And uh, so we are very, very pleased the kind of movement that we're seeing uh, that brings human souls together upon our shared humanity uh, to benefit the best of our life and show the best expressions that human life has in terms of being neighborly and being concerned uh, for each other. Uh, so without further ado, we're going to bring our brother up. And we do have a reporter here also, uh, two reporters, maybe three, uh, here today as well. This is also, we know this is a live stream. We're speaking to those around the world. Uh, live stream. They're hearing he was here as well. Uh, and it's also on uh, radio, national radio uh, as well uh, today. So everything that's said here is also being televised and then also being heard uh, around the world. And uh, so we're very grateful. And we greet all of you again. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be to you. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Please turn off all cell phones until after Juma. Please. Thank you. Rasulullah 
Kadwan Muhammadan Rasulullah Ayyallah أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله أحمده واستعينه واستجده واستغفره وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters and esteemed guests I greet you with the Arabic greeting of peace the Islamic greeting of peace Assalamu alaikum which means peace be to you and then for those of you all who are not familiar with the language, I was just greeted back with Wa alaikum salam, and to you be peace. And that segues into the topic about which I will briefly broach, and that is common life and struggle to free humanity. And in conjunction with that, the accountability of responsibility. I started this khutbah by seeking refuge with Allah from shaitan, the accursed. And for those of you all who are our Christian and Jewish cousins, you're familiar with this paradigm. Iblis, you know, the fallen one. You know, as Muslims, we believe that Iblis was a jinn. But the story is the same in that he did not bow to Adam. He disobeyed God. He was haughty. He looked down on Adam because Adam was a human being, something lower than himself. That's such ways into the topic about which I plan to discuss. And that's looking down on others and oppressing others when you have power. I want to read from Surah Al-Baqarah. That's the second surah in the Quran, the cow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. La ikrafidini. There is no compulsion in religion. The word here is deen. Now, it's not an exact translation. Deen means way, way of life, or your philosophy, your modem operandi, if you will. As Muslims, we are forbidden from forcing those who do not believe as we do to make them believe as we do, or to force them to our way of life. You're not a Muslim if you, do, if you do this. We're forbidden from doing this. We are encouraged to respect the laws of the country in which we reside. This is very important. And I say this as a bin Abd, the child of slaves. I met my great-grandfather in the late 70s. I was a small boy. He was in his 90s at the time. His father was a slave. 
So I'm not that far removed from the shackles of slavery, the chattel slavery upon this country, upon which this country was built. So I say, even coming from that, we still have to respect the laws of, those country, of this country. However, when those laws go against human decency, when they turn to be oppressive, we are to work within the paradigm of the laws of, that, of the country to work toward change, positive change, to do so in a manner that is just. We remember the civil rights marches of the 60s. And it's not lost on me. I was born the same year that Martin Luther King was shot. I ask Allah to bless him and reward him for his, his efforts and reward those who were involved in that struggle and died in that struggle for their efforts. We have new struggles now. We have new struggles for new people who are trying to come into this country. And this is a great country. Alhamdulillah, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for being an American. There are people who are dying trying to get into this country. This is not a new story. People coming over the, to this country on the inner tubes of tires, people hiding out in airplanes, the cargo bays of airplanes, just so they can have a chance to get into America. Not so they can blow us up, but so they can live part of that American dream, so they can escape the oppression that they're, they're currently experiencing in their country. Yeah, I've had a, an opportunity, alhamdulillah, to travel overseas. And sometimes I'm mistaken for, for somebody that's, that's not American. They, well, where's your father from? Where is your mother from? I said, well, you know, my dad's from New York, Brooklyn. My, yeah, <laughs> my mom's from, uh, I don't say Kinky Key because nobody knows who that is. So I said, well, I'm, she's from Chicago. How about your grandparents? Well, my, dad, my grandfather's from Richmond. So I got to go like three or four generations down before they actually convince them of Americans. You're American? Wallahi! How do you go to America? And I, wallahi, I had this brother's eyes started welling up with tears when he finally was convinced that I wasn't actually an American. I said, how do I go? You, you take me with me. You're with you? I, I speak little English, but good, I practice, right? I come with you, right? And, you know, I was like, wow, that's really something. Here I am, an American, and this person, I was in Saudi Arabia at the time, I was making Hajj in 97, and many of them were like, they wanted me to try to help them, you know, get into the country and become Americans, because, you know, you know, I hear life is so great in America, you know, the streets are paved with gold, and everybody has two cars, and, you know, this was the time um, the Cosby Show had been out for a while, so, yeah. even the black, wallahi, even the black, <laughs> has a nice house and car and everything. <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's very interesting. You know, because, and I say that because a lot of times there's many of us who put down this country. You know, they call it, it's the United States of America, the United States of America, and you know, we're the most oppressed and suppressed. Yes, this country was built on the oppression of others. It was built on the decimation of the people of the original nations of this country. But it was also built on the fortitude and the stick to of the people who came to this country, seeking asylum from an oppressive king. Look at the irony of that. Allahu Akbar. And, you know, I, I work, I'm a hospitalist by profession. I'm, I'm a clinician and an educator. I've spent my entire adult life learning how to heal bodies and minds my entire adult life learning how to help elevate people above their current situation, no matter how dire it may be. And I've seen greatness in people, greatness in the citizens of this country, greatness in, to, in the visitors of this country, the people who want so badly just to be called an American, Allah Akbar. Because this is a great country, it's a beautiful country. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless this country this country has been blessed with goodness, with riches, you know, unforeseen before. But there's a caveat to that. With that blessing, that blessing, that gift, is a gift from Allah. The word that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses is ni'mah, a gift, you know, when he gives us something. And in that gift, there's an amana. And that amana, the word amana is a trust. You know, my oldest children, alhamdulillah, they're, they're at an age where they're learning how to drive. You know, they're excited. Oh, I can get a license. Okay, what kind of car do you want? So, you know, that's 
I, and I, I try to impress upon them that, look, when you get that license, you know, that license, and inshallah, I'll be able to get you a car. That's a trust, that's a gift. But with that goes an accountability. You can kill somebody with that car. You can get yourself killed with that car. You can get arrested with that car. So the same thing with the gifts, the incredible gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this beautiful country of ours. There is an incredible trust. There is an incredible level of accountability. The world is looking at the United States of America for leadership. You know, whether we want them to or not. You know, sometimes you hear you know, our, our elected politicians and officials, may Allah bless them and guide them all. Say, so, well, you know, we're not getting involved in that situation. We're not getting involved over there. That's their war. That's their skirmish. But people look to us for leadership. And if our leaders fall short of leadership, as is manifested in their characters and their, and their words, we will have betrayed that trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And even as human beings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us an imana, a trust. He's made us vicegerents on the earth. Vicegerents on the earth. When he had our father, Adam, alayhi salam, and our mother, Hawa, alayhi, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with both of them. When he put them on the earth, and he gave them rain over the animals, and gave them rain even over the very nature. You know, we're able to change the course of rivers now. Allah Akbar. The stuff of Superman, we can change the course of mighty rivers. We can put up superstructures, tallest buildings in the world. You know, now, you know, if you told somebody less than 100 years ago, do you know that you can go from one side of the planet to the next in less than 24 hours? They'd look at you like you were crazy. Yeah, this is big structure. It's made of metal and it looks like a bird and it flies through the air. It can, cover, it can hold a bunch of people in it. That's insane. That's much noon. But now we take the airplane. The airplane, you take a plane ride, it's, it's routine now. What an incredible superhuman power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us through our brains and allows us to build things. What an incredible responsibility. What an incredible and awesome accountability we have. Allahu Akbar. We have damaged the earth in our greed and our, our our uh, desire for stuff. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in one of the surahs, to Kawthar, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, says, Al haqmu taqathur, hatta zurutma makabir, kalla sawfa ti'alamun, thumma kalla sawfa ti'alamun, kalla lau ti'alamun imal yaqeen, lata wana ujahim, thumma la turus aluna. Allah Akbar. And he keeps going on about life in the grave. He says, the first part of that ayat was verily man is greedy in his lust for power and is competing with each other for the things of this earth. Right? This dunya. We call it the life of this world. Hayata dunya. Yeah, and this is one of the things that's indicative of men. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, we have this in us. You know, we're happy with our car then somebody pulls up next to us in a car that we consider nicer. We're like, wow, man. That's the Mercedes. Oh, that guy's got the, the, the Lexus, that guy's got the, this, you know, I park in the doctor's parking lot at the hospital. I got a Ford Focus, 135,000 mile, 135, miles on it, $1,500. I got it so it could take me to and fro work. Now, now, <laughs> Allah, that's right. It's paid for. And it looks kind of funny juxtaposed to a, a Lexus <laughs> and a BMW. <laughs> In fact, one of the, um, the security guards came and said, you know, Doc, I was about to have your car towed, and then I remembered it was yours. I said, what? that car doesn't belong in this parking lot. <laughs> to us, it's mine. <laughs> yeah, but it's paid for, I to know. Now I have to be careful because Shaitan will come to me and say, man, come on, man, it's embarrassing, man. He's got dents in it. Makes that funny bumbling sound as you drive it. And I'll start to say, ah, you know, and I, I remember that I had, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us about competing with each other for the things of this world. That's one of the things that makes us start to be arrogant. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you a little bit, right? You know, first, you think about 
you know, one of the things that we have in this, this um, great city of ours, unfortunately, is a high rate of homelessness. And you see the guys out on the street, hey, hey, man, can I get some, man, can I get a little uh, change, man, I'm trying to get something to eat. Oh, God, it's the same guy I see every day, man, I can't go into the 7-Eleven without seeing this guy. But, you know, maybe Allah will allow that guy to get a job. Then he gets another job. Then a little bit more money. Then a little bit more money. Then a little bit more money. A little bit more, what we call falah, you know, success. And it's going to be hard for that person not to be arrogant. Think about all of us. We all started out as these very weak children, not knowing much. You know, weak, crawling on the ground. You know, now we're, you know, Allah brought us to a, a level of strength. You know, then he brings you back down. Some of us got gray hair. Yeah, I tried to memorize my speech because I don't like to make funny faces I read. I'm like, I can't, my vision's gone. You know, and he brings us back to a level of weakness. We're having been strong. But we have to be careful of that arrogance. We have to remember the trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us, you know, as we're strong. We have to help others. There's a hadith, the saying of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the one who murders, the one who takes the life of his fellow man. And recognize in this hadith, it doesn't say fellow Muslim, it says fellow man. I'm not going to give you the Arabic, but a fellow man. It doesn't say, you know, the one that looks like you, brown skin, curly hair, the one of your nation. It says your fellow man, the one who takes the life of his fellow human without just cause. It's as if he's murdered all of humankind. And the one who saves the life of his fellow man. This is if he saved all of humanity. May Allah make us like the latter, inshallah. You know, w these are very interesting times in which we're living. They're pivotal times. There's a changing of the guard, as it were, in this great country of ours. If you think about it, and I'll talk about this in the second khutbah, the significance of having a president named Barack Hussein Obama who was raised by a Muslim. His, his father, his, his stepdad was Indonesian. So he was very familiar with Islam. And still, when polls are taken, there's still a significant percentage of the country that believes that he was a closet Muslim. <laughs> you know, and I always find that interesting. Yet here he was our president for two terms. Now we have the changing of a guard. We have somebody with a different paradigm. Someone who has spoken differently. Someone who maybe has not been as inclusive as he could. Maybe someone who has spewed a bit more vitriol than he should have. But he's learning fast, I think. But there is a lesson for us in that. I'll talk about it in the second part of the khutbah, inshallah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على خير المرسلين محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praises to Allah We ask Allah's peace and blessings on the one best among the prophets Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم ابن عبد الله as well as on the fam on his family and his companions So I want to use the second part of the khutbah to talk about the different paradigms of leadership and thus the different paradigms of responsibility and accountability. And this is with respect to those who are given great power. Um, I'm a comic book buff, so if you're familiar with uh, Peter Parker, who is uh, Spider-Man, um, his uncle Ben, before he uh, got killed, said, you know, Peter, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. So I, I always remember that. But this is not a new paradigm. So in the Quran, there's two paradigms of men who had great power. And when I say power, they were kings and rulers and presidents and leaders of great armies, all wrapped into one. So those two paradigms is one, Lord Karnain, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him, and then the other, on the antithesis of that, was Fa'un. May Allah curse <laughs> And this paradigm is not different from the paradigm that was in the, that's in the Bible. So, Ferun was given great power. 
he's somebody that could, you know, if he did the, the Julius Caesar thing of the thumbs up and the thumbs down, people died or they lived. You know, he had this power where, you know, he had wizards at his disposal. He had vast resources at his disposal. You know, the, the, the empire, the Egyptian empire of, of thousands of years ago, there's still evidence of that today. You see the great pyramids of Gaza, the Sphinx. And you're like, wow, man, these are mighty people. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that there are, are, there are nations that were mightier even than them. He says, look at the nations that were before you. You know, they engage in facade, open lewdness. And we raise them to the ground such that not even a trace of them exists. But there's still traces of the mighty Egyptian empire of which Ferun led. And Moses was approaching Ferun once. He was trying to give him dawah. He was trying to convince him that he was not God. And he would tell Ferun, he said, look, my God has power over life and death. And one of the stories behind this is that Ferun said, I have power over life and death. There's a tafsir in which Ferun, he freed a man that was, had been sentenced to death. He said, all right, you're free. And then another man, he took, he said, kill him. He said, See, I have power over life and death. And Arapuka, I am your Lord. And it was very hard for him not to be convinced that he was not God until it was too late. And we've all seen the Ten Commandments movie. You know, he gets killed, you know, during the party in the Red Sea when Moses, Musa alayhi salam, we call him Musa in the Quran, was trying to free Bani Israel, the children of Israel. It was too late for him. He never learned. Now you take Dhura Karnain, and this is in Surat al-Kaf, or the cave. This is the 18th surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Dhura Karnain the ends of all means, meaning he gave him great power in the land, great army, you know, amazing, you know, knowledge, knowledge of science. You know, and his community thrived, his nation thrived under his leadership. Does that sound familiar? Allah Akbar. So we can follow either the path of Ferun or we can follow the path of Dhur Karnain. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help our leaders follow the latter. You know, somebody looked at me funny when I said, you know what, we're talking about this at work. I try to eschew talks of uh, politics and religion at work. You know, uh, it doesn't always bode well. But, um, I said, look, you know what? I ask Allah subhanahu I ask God to bless Donald Trump and his beautiful family. I ask God to soften his heart. I ask God to clear his mind so that the laws that he passes are not oppressive to people, that he takes a more inclusive approach to this great country of ours. You look around this room. This is a small room, but how many different shades of people out there, how many different hair textures, how many different languages are spoken here? Allah Akbar, how many of you all came to this country, either you were Bani Abd like me, the children of slaves, or you came to this country saying, look man, I want to take advantage, and take advantage of a good way, of the greatness that this country has. I want my children, you know, I, I, I work with a lot of folks from overseas, Ethiopia, Egypt, my boss is Iranian, uh, yeah, Indian, Pakistan, Ethiopia, Nigeria. And they all push, they tell me how they push their children. Oh yeah, my kids got a scholarship to this college, and they got a scholarship to that college, and they're doing this and they're doing that. And they're enjoying the greatness that this country has. You know, and, and it hurts, and we were talking about the, the go back where you came from statement. You know, that was hollered at me when I was a young boy walking down the street. Why don't you go back where you came from? I said, oh, D.C.? I'm from here. <laughs> okay. And I did. I did what the guy told me to do. I, I, I went back to where I came from. <laughs> D.C. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. And it, it's, it's really telling when you have a nation that's built on the greatness of immigrants. And I include our European brothers and sisters in that. You know, much of the rights and privileges that we enjoy in this country 
are based on a Jeffersonian paradigm. And those are the other founding fathers of this great nation of ours. Allah you know, the, the right to freedom of speech. You know, the right to speak out against oppressive laws. When people tell, ah, oh, that's un American. Did you have you read the uh, Constitution? You know, I didn't teach the Constitution like Obama did, but I've certainly read it. Have you read the Declaration of Independence? You know, Allah Akbar. Yeah, and that's something unique about this country. Like I said, I've been able to travel overseas. Those people who want to leave their, you know, one guy, one doctor told me, he says, I can't go back to my country. They will kill my whole family. Allah Akbar. Imagine that. Here you have rights. Imagine being in a country where, you know, and, and I hope I don't offend anybody here, but a monarchy. Think about the concept of a monarchy where, you know, maybe the father is a good ruler, but the son, you know, he's much noon. He's kind of crazy and he doesn't, uh, he's not a good leader, but you can't do anything about it. You can't vote the person out of office. We have this amazing democratic process here. You know, that a, a process in which our elected officials are of the people, voted by the people, and to serve for the people. Allah Akbar, what a unique thing. What a beautiful, unique thing. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us, to help us unite, to help us realize the, the power that we have, and to be, hold ourselves accountable to that. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us guidance from the Qur'an and the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, send his mercy upon him and his family. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to bless this great nation of ours. I ask Allah to grant our leaders guidance and help them and us not betray the amazing trust that he's given us by granting us this, the great success of this country. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us all the best of this life and the best of the next and keep us safe from the hellfire. Rabbana atina fa dunya hasitam wa fila akhrati hasitam wa nil banar. Akim as-salam. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. I'll give us a about a minute to get our, our lines straight in the back, inshallah. Can you all hear me in the back? Okay, all right. Line straight in the back, inshallah. Okay, thank you. Let's turn your hearts to Allah. Pray this prayer as if it's your last, inshallah. <clears throat> Allahu Akbar. Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا سراط المستقيم سراط الذين أنامت عليهم غير مغضوب عليهم ولا الدالين سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي كدر فهدى والذي يحجر ملعا فجعلهم غثاء نحوا سلوك الأكبر تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم جحر ما يخفى ونيسر كريسرا 
فذكر إن فأت ذكرا سيذكر ما يخشى وجدنب أشقى الذي يسر الكبرى ثم لم يرفل يحيى كرف لها من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بات تريات الدنيا ولا يخرى تلحن ولا أبقى إن حاضر في سفورا صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إخدنا سيرات المستقيم سيرات الذين أنامت عليهم غير مغدوب عليهم ولا الدالين هل أتاك حديث عاشيا وجه يوم أذن حاشيا عمة النصبا تسلى النار حانيا تسقى من عين عانيا ليس لهم تعام إلا من ضريع لا يسمن ولا يعني من جوع وجه يوم أذن عما لسائها الراديا في جنة عاليا لا تسقه فيها لاغيا فيها عين جارية فيها سرور مرفعة وأقب مودعة ونمارق مصفوفة وزرابي مبثوثة أفلا ينظرون إلى إبل كيف خلكت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى جبال كيف نسبت وإلى الأرض كيف سدهت فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمسيطر إلى من تولى وكفر فيعذبه الله الأذاب الأكبر إن إلينا إيابهم ثم إن علينا حسابهم الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا سيرات المستقيم سيرات الذين أنامت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الدالين أمين If I've said anything that is incorrect, it is from my own ignorance. If I've said anything of which is benefit to you all, uh, it's from Allah.
wonderful message, and we are certainly uh, appreciative to have that message today. Uh, we want to, again, we want to have, uh, we want to hear from several of our guests. We do have um, from the Mayor's Office of Community Affairs, uh, Director of uh, Religious Affairs, uh, Reverend Thomas Bowen. So he has a message from the Mayor. So those, again, uh, if you don't have to leave, please stay to listen to the message. If you do have to leave, please do so quietly because others will be listening. I also want to have following him uh, Pastor Michael uh, Wilker coming up behind him and any of the other religious leaders who uh, after the mayor's uh, rep speak uh, to really say whatever moves them to greet the community and say whatever whatever moves them. Uh, so we're going to get ready to turn the mic over to him. Uh, but I do want to remind everyone and mention also that we would like to extend our heartfelt condolences to the family of our beloved community member, uh, Sister Amatullah Sharif. You know, she had a janazah recently, and we, we put her in her place of rest uh, just before the Juma here today. So many of her family members are here today as well. So continue to ex extend uh, your condolences to them. And also we say congratulations on uh, a life well lived. That's such a wonderful spirit. And uh, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, yes, may, may Allah forgive her her sins and reward her with the highest of the paradise, you know. So keep her family in your prayers and in your hearts. And uh, also we know uh, it's difficult when we, when we lose a loved one. And, but immediately after the Juma, we want you all to know that you can join the family downstairs for a repast. And we, want, we expect to hear much about our dear sister, inshallah, God willing. So we're going to turn it over now to our dear brother. Uh, we're on the Mayor's Interfaith Council, which that comes up under his, uh, the, uh, his directorate, uh, Reverend Thomas Bourne. Assalamu alaikum. It's a pleasure to be before you, Mashallah Muhammad, a valued entity in our community. And you ought to know that Imam Sharif is a very active member of the Mayor's Interfaith Council. We could not operate without him and the brothers and sisters here and the former brother Sabir and Sister Feature Muhammad. So I thank you for your service to the city. I'm here on behalf of our mayor, Mayor Muriel Bowser. I see so many familiar faces here, like Officer Kevin Johnson of the MPD Special Liaison Branch. And Officer Johnson, if you could come uh, forward. He and I, along with Brother um, Amin Muslim, were tasked with going to all of the Islamic centers in the city. It took us three days, but we did it. Three days because sometimes we had to circle back I see Brother Anwar, who's a vital member of the community. We would not have H Street as it is had it not been for a Muslim brother in the person of Anwar. And there's so many people um, who are vital to our city. I'm not here because you need me. I'm here because we need you. We're a community. And Dr. King teaches us that what affects one directly affects us all indirectly. So in light of what happened in Quebec, we were not going to be asleep at the wheel. As we know of today, there's no credible threat against any Islamic institution in Washington, D.C., but we're not going to be reactive. We're going to be proactive as we continue to build our relationship across this city in all eight wards. And I'm thankful for you and once again for Imam Sharif for helping to keep us on task. We ought to stand for something. We ought to stand for something as people, as people of faith. We ought to stand for something as a city. And in D.C., a part of our values are freedom, liberty, and tolerance. These are D.C. values. And we're going to stand together because together we are strong. So I hope in the days to come, that wherever your need be, that you will contact me. My, my task is I deal with anything spiritual or religious in the District of Columbia. That's an awesome task. But I know that I have a huge army. And that army is not of the, of the U.S. military. That's in the people of faith coming together. So I thank you that we're stronger than hatred. And hatred is not a value in our city. I thank you because we know that the prayers of the people avail much. I ask that you continue, that you will lift up our mayor in your prayers. Speak the name of Muriel Bowser. 
because she's going to need prayer. Reminds me of a passage, I'm dealing with Esther, right? She's going to see the king. And if I perish, then I perish. But through prayer, we'll keep her strong, we'll keep our city strong, and we'll be strong. So we certainly want to thank the mayor. Uh, I was doing an interview here right, right after the Quebec County incident where the six uh, Muslims, actually 24 people were affected by that, six killed, uh, maybe five uh, injured, and then uh, the other uh, others, uh, 12 were also uh, minor, minor injuries. So right after that, you know, I, people, media gets involved, want to know what we think about it. So I had a, a reporter here doing a story. And as that was getting ready to happen, in walks uh, Reverend Bow and uh, Kevin. Where Kevin going? And, and uh, I mean, so the mayor, she, she, when she saw that, she said, my population may be at risk here. I'm not going to wait. Let's go check right now and see what we can do to uh, enhance things. And that was such a wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, experience to have that to happen right when the reporter was here to see exactly what she was doing. And I, and I, I was going to call her anyway, but she ended up being, being ahead, ahead of it. And that was, that was very special. So what I want you to do now here also today, and this is happening all across America, actually. Uh, there are many religious leaders of other faiths visiting mosques, you know. Uh, it's a movement going on now. And we are so blessed and grateful to have friends and, and communities of faith like the ones we have here today. And there are many who are not here, but they'll be coming. And uh, we are just so appreciative. And this person I want to bring up right now, he's no stranger here. You know, Pastor Michael, he was here before. We had an open house. And he brought a lot of people. And he spoke, and we just thank him. He, he always responded, many of them always respond to it. We're together, you know. Uh, God, Almighty God, never wanted the, the, the followers of one prophet fighting against another follower of other prophet. No, we're connected, you know. The, all the, the prophets in the Bible, in the Quran, et cetera, you know. So we, 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 we're, we're one family. So we want to give him an opportunity to greet you and say what moves, moves his heart. Thank you. Thank you, Imam. Salam alaikum. Um, I'm here and I put it on, okay. Um, I thank you for your leadership, the leadership that the Imam gives, but also that the leadership and the service that you all give to make our community better. But I also um, am here to thank you for your friendship. On Thursday night, I was um, at a basketball game. My son, Carl, is 14 years old today, and he's six foot three already. And he's got complexion lighter than mine with fiery red hair. And um, he plays basketball in Washington, D.C. So you know that that means that he's probably, and he is, the only white kid on his basketball team. <laughs> and uh, all throughout the time that he's been going to his school, um, another member of Masjid Muhammad has be become my friend. And so after school and before school, as we're dropping our kids off, he drops off his grandson, Alonso, at the school and picks him up after school. And um, we talk religion. We talk about Abraham, peace be upon him. And we talk about uh, Jesus Christ for me. And we have these wonderful conversations of friendship. And we have a common word between us. To love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And we support each other in doing that, both loving God alone and loving neighbors in our community. But um, at that basketball game, it was very tense at times. And his grandson, Alonso, was very nervous. And my son, Carl, was very nervous. We could see it on their faces. But the grandfather and the father were sitting next to each other in the, in the bleachers. And during the most tense period of time, we saw our two grandson and son reach out to one another, speak a word, what we couldn't hear, but it looked like a word of grace and friendship. And then they clasped hands. That friendship. And that's what we have to share. And so we're here for our children, for our grandchildren, for folks like you and folks like you young people here, because we want to be a community of friends together. So thank you very much, Imam, and thank you very much, Mashji Muhammad. Thank you.
Yeah, he, he, he reminded me of one of the verses in the Quran uh, that says to Alu ila kalimatin sawah. Come to common words, common terms, and he mentioned that's what a lot God tells in the Quran to say that to each other. So we, we, we appreciate that. We want to hear now any of the sisters too, it's okay, it's not as crowded as I thought, but if any of our sister ministers wanted to come forth and make some comments, uh, please 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 feel free to do so. And while we have our next speaker introduce himself as well. Thank you. Hello, my name is Alex Dyer. I am from uh, St. Thomas Episcopal Church uh, in DuPont Circle. Um, I bring you greetings from them and also from uh, St. Columba's as well, uh, Episcopal Church. Uh, we got together because uh, we in the Episcopal Church, and I stand with uh, as well as other uh, Christian brothers and sisters, don't believe in this false narrative uh, that is being propagated. Uh, we know better. Uh, we know that this narrative is built on Islamophobia, and you all know that phobia means fear, right? And we know, uh, and both our religions teach that, the love is greater than fear. And it's built on love, and we are built on love, and as children of Adam, we know uh, that that love will one day conquer, inshallah. And uh, meanwhile, I just want to let you know that we stand with you, uh, we know that this will not unfortunately be a moment but will have to be a movement uh, and so we not only stand with you today but in whatever comes uh, in order to get us to that point where love will conquer fear know that we will be with you every step of the way thank you Yes, and please, please take our regards back to the congregation, please. We really appreciate you being here. Please. Thank you. Hi, my name is uh, Katie Osweiler. I'm at the Lutheran Church of the Reformation. Can you all hear? Okay. I'm pretty loud. Um, I actually wanted to say um, thank you for welcoming us into your, into your community. Um, I spent two years in Niger as a, a wife of a diplomat. And I got to do a special thing where I worked for the, the ambassador in Niger, the U.S. ambassador. And um, during that time, it was, I think, two years ago when um, there were lots of marches in Paris uh, for the Charlie Hebdo shootings. And the president of Niger went to um, France to, in solidarity of freedom of speech. Many people in the opposition party were uh, against that, and there were lots of rioting happening in the country of Niger. One of the things that happens was that many people were burning churches. And, um, and I, I want to tell this story because there were two cities out, out east. One of them, the French Cultural Center was burned and many churches were burned. And the next day there was another city, it kind of moved from east to west and our, our capital was in the west. And there was another city that came to, but here's what happened. That city had for a long time had a, an a, uh, interreligious group. So there were Christians and Muslims that were gathering for many years. And in that moment, everybody mobilized. The imams and the priests and the Christian pastors, they all got together. And the imams went out to the, the young men who were burning tires in the outskirts of town and said, all right, burn your tires. But if you come into this church, if you come into the city and burn these churches, you will answer to us. And no, no church got burned in that city. And I just, I, I think of that and those stories that we have to tell each other, I look at that, and, and that can happen here too. It's about stories and dialogue and, and meeting and having those strong bonds. So thank you for welcoming us. We welcome you into our communities, and we're really all in this together. So thank you so much. Thank you. Just Mom um, Sharif, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Um, I'm Pastor Lisa Lassiter Waylu, and I pastor at Capitol Hill United Methodist Church. I have shared with your prayer service one time before. It was six years ago, and I was very pregnant. Um, and I, I had never been to a prayer service and was doing a sermon series on uh, uh, world religions. And I didn't know the area of D.C. so well at that time, and so I, um, I, I hopped in a cab because I wasn't walking well. It was a tough pregnancy, right? And I say um, to the driver, I said, you know, I, I, I'm going to stay for this prayer service, and then do you think that I might be able to find a cab when I get out of the service? And he looked at me and he said, ma'am, you're, you're going to a mosque in D.C. 
And he said, and in fact, it is a grace to me because I'm going to be praying with you and I will drive you home. <laughs> and he did. Um, and I remember being here and being so moved by the devotion of your prayer, thinking, how do I take that spirit back to my people? Sometimes think they have it all figured out. And so I am here today for two reasons. One, to say thank you for the ways in which all the lessons you have to teach um, folks who think we know more than we know, right? But, but the other thing I want to vow is that we, um, we will be praying for you and for your community and for Imam Sharif by name in our community weekly. Um, because I truly believe these relationships are invaluable and I am sorry that it takes a tragedy for me to come back, but we are here. And as Sister Barash said, I will keep coming back because we are um, not building friendships, but family ships. Uh, the last thing is that I appreciate your word of um, these are brothers and sisters who've said they will get first in line if our registry is there, and we will, with my two little uh, interracial boys and, 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 uh, and um, uh, growing the interfaith family. Um, we are so grateful uh, for your welcome. Thank you. Thank you. We could right. appreciate that. A long way to go. A long so, so you heard it from me, but you heard it from them themselves, if you hadn't heard it before. We stand together. Our community, our responsibility. And we are so grateful to have you with us and look forward to spending more time with you in some shared spaces where we can do more things together. Thank you very much. As I'm Lincoln, everyone. Uh, well, this is just a brief announcement. Sunday, this Sunday, we're having our, our community, commu community uh, unity potluck. Uh, and a briefing at 12 o'clock. Uh, so please come with us, bring your favorite dish, and bring enough for more than just your family if you can. And uh, we're going to eat together. It's just a social, and then we'll give you an update on some of the things that are going on. It's informal, uh, but if we do have some of our neighbors coming, and we also have some of our other community members that will be coming. Uh, so please come and share and interact uh, with our family, with our neighbors, and also our friends of faith. Yeah, yeah, tell them, get them all together. Uh, tackling Islamophobia at home. Uh, I'm going to be on a panel, a panel at the MLK Memorial Library on February the 9th at 7 o'clock. Uh, the panel is again called Tackling Islamophobia at Home. So that's the panel that will be at the MLK Library February the 9th at 7 o'clock. Uh, tickets for the National Museum of African American History and Culture. Uh, we know about the big museum. If you haven't gone yet, you may give this an opportunity. Our Kibar Nutrition site for our seniors has tickets for tours for 11 a.m. and 11.15 a.m. on Wednesday, February the 8th. Stop by to pick up your tickets. Visitors have to provide their own transportation. So stop by, see the Kibar person, which is uh, Rob Bill, and get your tickets for the National Museum of African American History and Culture. Thank you again. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. Yeah, well, come on up. Yeah. Thank you, brother.